Hey, investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey, and today I'm going to share investing advice from highly respected investor Howard Marks, who sat down with Katie Koch, the chief investment officer of public equity at Goldman Sachs in June 2022, where he talked about the mindset and temperament you need to have to invest in stocks that aren't in a bubble, and maybe they're no longer in a bubble, but Howard Marks' line of thinking is way closer to Ray Dalio's in not calling stocks in a bubble, unlike other investors who have like Jeremy Grantham and Michael Burry. And so Howard Marks educates people on where you need to be willing to go as an investor to be successful in investing in stocks. And so if you're also on the hunt for wisdom so that you can up your investing game, please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons because it greatly helps out with the YouTube algorithm. I greatly appreciate it and I hope you enjoy the following. So uh, I, I reached two important conclusions. It's not what you buy is what you pay. Mm -hmm. And success in investing doesn't come from buying good things, but from buying things well. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know the difference, you're in the wrong business, literally. So everything you buy should offer some combination of excellence of quality mm -hmm. and or attractive price. You don't wanna buy a great company at a terrible price. You don't want to buy, you don't want to buy, probably don't want to buy something which is uh, uh, horrible fundamentals at a, at a really low seeming price. It's the trade-off that you're looking for. Last question on the market cycle. So in your first book, you include the poor man's almanac for investing. And it's a very, it's a checklist. Yeah. Well, it's... Which we, it's facetious, of course. Yeah. Uh, semi facetious. So there are some things to look for to see whether your negative sentiments negative or positive. And basically, if the sentiment's too positive, you want to hold on to your wallet. It's right. like a yeah. quick summary of it. Yeah. Yeah. So do GPs have all the power? Do LPs have all the power? Are the lenders in negotiating, in negotiating, in, in, terms? In negotiating terms of funds? And then uh, another one was lenders are eager or they're reticent. Capital's abundant. Capital's scarce. Right. Somewhere in the verbiage you put in there that if you're popular at a cocktail party, that's a warning signal that things yeah. are too euphoric. Yeah. Um, but if you go through that, I'm not going to ask you to make predictions, but you, you think about that framework. We've just laid it out here. Where are we in this cycle? Because you said we can know where we are now. Well, I right? think I think we're in I think we're in moderate territory today. You know, mm -hmm. and I have not. Some people started calling you know b bubble mm -hmm. two years ago, June of twenty. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't called bubble at all. Mm -hmm. I think things are high, but not crazy. And I, I you know, I, I think that valuations have always been reasonable. Mm -hmm. relative to interest rates. It happens that rel interest rates couldn't stay as low as they were. Mm -hmm. So valuations have proved to be vulnerable. But I just don't think it's crazy. And, mm -hmm. and now I think that the events of the last uh, six months mm -hmm. have taken uh, the, you know, the bloom off the rose, uh, that, uh, that most of the excesses have been driven out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, again, I think reasonable. Uh, I was, you know, in, in thinking about coming here and, mm -hmm. uh, this morning, and uh, you mentioned that, my, that, that I had more correct forecasts than I admit. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, they weren't forecasts. They were just observations of current conditions. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, when I was working on the book about market cycles with my son, Andrew, mm -hmm. who is a very good uh, professional investor, uh, I said to him, Andrew, you know, I think when I look back, I, I do admit, I said, I think most of my market calls have been correct. Mm -hmm. He says, yeah, dad, that's because you did it five times in 50 years. <laughs> and, but it, 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 was a, it was a very profound thing he said, because five, six, seven, whatever it is, times in my career, prices were either here or here. And when prices are at absurd extremes, the case, the logic for a market call mm -hmm. is very strong and the probability of being right is very high. Mm -hmm. But not when it's here or here or here or here or here or here, mm -hmm. you know? And that's, that's really the difference. And we're here? Well, I think we're here. <laughs> here. You know? But I mean, but the point is, <laughs> The point is, here, I mean, 
prices here are, have always collapsed, mm -hmm. whatever here is defined as. But if I say to you, what's the probability of a decline in six months? Mm -hmm. Here, you might say it's 95. You would never say 100 to anything, in my opinion. But here, it may be 75. And here, it may be 55. Mm -hmm. And then when you pass intrinsic value, then, and you, you're selling below, well, what's the probability that six month, next six months are up? Uh, 55, mm -hmm. 75, 95. So, you know, the, one of the biggest mistakes you can make is to think that overpriced and going down tomorrow are synonymous. Mm -hmm. Markets that are overpriced often keep going. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, it, it, well, Keynes said it best of anybody. He said markets can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. Mm -hmm. And some, so somebody who bets that a market which is irrational is going to, a market is too high. We say that's irrational. Somebody who bets heavily that that means it's going down tomorrow could lose his shirt or her shirt because because markets often are overpriced and become more overpriced and more overpriced and more overpriced and more overpriced. That's why we have words like rising market, bull market, bubble. And if it were true that every overpriced market reverts and becomes fairly priced, then we would never get a bubble because they would stop going up here. But sometimes they go to here and sometimes they go to here. When they get here, the call is pretty safe, uh, especially if you add the word eventually. So, so, what, so what that means is, is, as long as you realize that nothing is sure to happen in this business, every, every, every irrationality can be exceeded, that means that you should try to bulletproof your affairs so that it may be likely to happen, but you want to be able to last long enough so that you're around when it happens. I want to talk a little bit about um, emotion for a second. Mm. Um, and you've said that you, you need to either be unemotional yeah. or act like you yeah. are. And I wanted to go actually back to a story you, said, you talked about before, which is that you, this 2008, which a lot of people in this audience weren't here. And I think if you weren't there, you might not appreciate how scary that actually was. I mean, you went through the dominoes of all the banks falling. Yeah, yeah. But were you scared when you and Bruce were putting the capital to work? How did you, or, or if not, how did you keep yourself from being emotional? Well, first, let me say, if you think about the norm, what happens? Things are going well. The economy is performing well. Companies are reporting good earnings. Stock prices are rising. Everybody's optimistic. And the longer this goes on, people become more and more and more positive yeah. and, and until they, they buy here. And when they run out of money, then things turn around. Then eventually the economy weakens, then the corporate profits aren't so good and start, start, prices start going down and people start losing hope. Mm -hmm. And they, as, as this continues, they get more and more depressed and more panicky and they stop, start fearing further losses mm -hmm. until they sell out down here. In other words, they, they, they tend to buy more here and sell more here, which is what the opposite of what we all should do. Mm -hmm. My mother said, how we buy low, sell high. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 uh, so e emotion is our enemy. Emotion tends to get us to do the wrong thing at the wrong time. And we have to resist that. Mm -hmm. And one thing I point out is that the the influences that affect the crowd and make it do what I just described. Those influences are universal mm -hmm. and I feel them, too. And you feel them, too. And everyone in here, we read the same newspapers. The news is the same for all of us. In order to outperform, by definition, you have to depart from the crowd. You have to hold a different position. And you have to have resolve to do it. And it's, it, you know, it's just, it can't be easy. And, you know, uh, I had a, one of my colleagues came to me in 98, talking about ancient history, long-term capital mm -hmm. had just melted down. 
and we had the ruble uh, default and the, and the Southeast Asian crisis, and there was a lot of things going wrong. And one of the guys who considers himself to be a very thoughtful. This is that oak tree, though, right? Yes, so, yeah. that oak tree comes to me and he says, this is it. I think it's all over. I think the financial system's going to melt down. I think he, he explains to me all these things. And I said, great. Thank you for sharing that with me. Now go back to your desk and do your job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I said, a, a battlefield hero is not somebody who's unafraid. It's somebody who's afraid, but he does it anyway. I mean, if you're in scary circumstances, to be unafraid, you kind of have to be a nut. Mm-hmm. But the key is, can you be afraid and do your job anyway? I was just going to ask you if you thought it helped that you had each other. Well, I think, I think it's very important that we have each other and we buck each other up. Yeah. And, and you need that because you know, what I wanted to say yeah. is Dave Swenson, who for 35 years ran the, uh, the endowment at Yale and did a bang up job. And he wrote a book called Pioneering Portfolio Management, I think it was in 98 or 9. And he said that successful investing requires uh, the adoption of uncomfortably idiosyncratic positions. Uh, everybody has, has the same influences. Everybody thinks pretty much the same. Everybody anoints the same winners and the same and criticizes the same losers. And obviously, the, tomorrow's winners are usually found on the pile of today's losers, not on today's pile of today's winners. But to prospect in today's pile of losers, the, the things that everybody else are junk, you have to be idiosyncratic. You have to take on idiosyncratic positions. And it's a rare person who can do that and not feel some discomfort. Mm -hmm. So I think that those two words, uncomfortably idiosyncratic, tell a huge part of the story. Mm -hmm. Um, But you have to do it. And you have to, when, you know, when Lehman goes under, you have to buy, You, you can't sell.